Hi, and welcome to the ninth video in our Cybersecurity Labs for Beginners. In the last video, we went ahead and we installed OpenVAS on our Kali Linux machine or our TAC box. So, and then what happened after that is we need the feeds to synchronize. So we had to leave the video at the feed synchronization. Now that all those feeds are updated and synchronized, what we can actually go ahead and do is we can actually launch a scan on our network or direct it towards a specific machine. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be doing a scan on our Metasploitable 2 machine to be able to detect all the vulnerabilities. Now, this is great for a blue team or a red team. For the blue team, it will tell us how we can actually lock down that system and prevent from hackers from hacking in or potential bad actors from exploiting that machine. And as a red team, it will actually give us the vulnerabilities that we will want to probably target or exploit to gain access into that machine and potentially escalate our privileges. So let's go ahead and let's actually get started here. So we're going to have to start by obviously opening up our Firefox window and going to our OpenVAS system, which that is going to be, if we remember, HTTPS colon backslash backslash localhost colon, and then we're going to specify our port 9392. And that is, did I do a little typo there? I probably did. So now we're going to get to our login page. Now, this is where I said to note down that password that we got during that setup. But let's say we lost that password. We don't remember it. We didn't take it down or anything like that. That is a okay because we can actually reset this admin password through our terminal. So let's go ahead. Let's just hit sign in here. I get login failed because I took down the wrong password or whether that case may be. So let's go ahead and let's reset our password here. So the way that we would actually reset our admin password for our OpenVAS system is going to be opening up terminal then typing in sudo space dash capital E space dash lowercase u space underscore JVM space JVMD space dash dash user equals admin space dash dash new dash password equals and then we're going to put in the password that we want it to be so let's change it to admin here now of course this is not recommended to set the password to admin because then our username and our password is the exact same but for the sake of the youtube video and i don't want to leak potentially any kind of patterns of my passwords i'm just going to set that as admin this way it protects me and also it becomes a very easy password to just kind of remember for this home lab Afterwards, after this video, I'm going to change it back to what I actually want it to be using that same command. So we're going to go into admin admin here and you will see that I typed in the password as admin and we're going to hit sign in. And there we go. So we're going to update the password here. And now we have our dashboards. Now you're going to see that I already have tasks so i've already performed a scan and this is the scan that we're going to be re-performing today in the video the reason why i did this is these scans can take quite a bit of time um, i believe that this scan on metasploitable 2 took my virtual machine just under an hour to complete uh, so obviously i don't want to wait in the video with you guys for an hour for that scan to complete it would be a very boring video so I'm going to show you guys how to launch the, the scan the easy way. Um, and then in a future video, we can actually do more in-depth scans. Or if you guys want to put in the comments what else you guys would like to see from OpenVAS or maybe just more videos in general on OpenVAS, please let me know in the comment section down below. And we can definitely get that set up for you guys. So the first thing we're going to want to do is click on scans and then click on tasks. Now this is where we are going to be setting up our scan. Now there's going to be this little um, wand with a star on it and we're going to click on task wizard. Now this is going to ask us for an IP address or host name. Now here this is where we are actually going to put in the IP address of our Metasploitable 2 machine. So for us it's going to be 172.30.2.101. 
Now, if you don't know how, if you don't know what your IP address or how to get your IP address from that Metasploitable 2 machine, if we actually open up our Metasploitable 2 machine here and you type in ifconfig, you will get the IP address, which we can see here. It is 172.30.2.101. So that's the IP address that we are going to be putting in here. And we are going to be clicking on start scan. Now you're going to see that I have one that's done and one that is requested. And if we refresh our screen here, you're going to see that we have a requested. Now this will take a little while, it usually takes about a minute or so to actually get started. So now it's queued and now it's actually running. So what you can actually do is click on the either the name here, you're going to see some of the details of the actual scan. Or if you click on this little one for the reports here, it will actually take you to the report for the scan. And then you can click on in this date field and it's going to bring up this report. Now here you're going to see the results, which of course right now is just zero. The host is zero, ports is zero, applications is zero. Everything is going to be zeroed out here, which that is completely fine. We just started the scan. But let's go ahead and let's pretend that we've been running this now for an hour and it is actually fully complete. We will actually have this scan here that is going to show done. It's going to show the last report and it's going to go to show the severity of, um, of that scan as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on that one beside the report here and it's going to take us to the report. And in here we can actually see once again the severity of that report, the number of high severity alerts, medium alerts, low, and the number of log for information and false positives. So what we can actually do is click on this little date here and this will bring us really into that detailed report. And if we click on results here, we can see that we have 61 out of 508. And this will actually tell us all the vulnerabilities on this machine right now. So we can actually see that the regexec service is running. And if we actually click on that vulnerability, it will give us a lot of details, the detection method and a solution type. So this is gonna actually tell us that we should disable the regexec service and use alternatives like SSH. So this is just a very simple fix. We actually just have to disable this service and that vulnerability disappears. Now, if we go to the next one, we have a possible backdoor ingress lock. The solution is a whole cleanup of the infected system is recommended. So this one is definitely a little bit more of a harder one to fix. But again, you're going to see a bunch of these. So you're going to see even the OS is end of life. So it actually detects the end of life date of our operating system that is running on Metasploitable. And of course, the solution is update the OS, tells us where to get the OS updates. But it also says that maybe it's not actually out of date. Let's say as we are approaching the end of Windows 10 support, um, Windows 10 will show up here as end of life, but let's say you have an agreement with Microsoft to have those ESU updates, the extended security updates, you can actually do an override and say, no, this system's okay. Even though it's Windows 10, we have the extended security updates. This system won't know that you have the extended security updates. You have to tell it. Um, so those are some of the other things. Now we can actually see here, the VSTPD compromised source package backdoor vulnerability. And we can see here the solution type is vendor fix. The repair package can be downloaded from the referenced vendor homepage. Please validate the package with its signature. So as you can see, this gives us a great amount of detail. And really, it, honestly, for blue teams and red teams, this information is priceless. Like this will help you know exactly what's going on in your environment. Now, of course, this is with OpenVast. You can also do this with Nessus. Nessus is a little bit probably more enterprise ready compared to OpenVast because OpenVast is still open source um, and not paid. Nessus has like a, definitely a much bigger team. 
Um, but as a red team, you can definitely, or a blue team, Open Vast will give you quite a bit of details in order for you to be able to do your job. If you're in a workplace that cannot afford the Nessus licenses, um, Open Vast is definitely a very, very good tool. And again, if you have a small home lab, the Nessus Essentials, you are allowed up to 16 IPs. If you guys want to see um, Nessus videos, please let me know in the comment section down below and we can definitely install it and run it to actually compare against the OpenVAS systems. But that is the results page. We will also see on the hosts, we can see that the host here, it, this, this is our IP address. We can see the OS is Ubuntu. Um, the number of ports that was detected open, the number of applications we found. Um, so if we click on ports, you will see all the different ports and their associated severity based on what we've found. So we can see that port 80, definitely a lot of a strong vulnerability on it. The port 512, also a high vulnerability on it. And of course, when you look at your vulnerabilities, you can actually see here that the regsec is the one that's running on 512. So a lot of them do link up nicely together as well. Here we can actually see the applications on the system as well. So here we can see the VST, um, VSFTPD, uh, the Postgres SQL, Samba. Um, so uh, jQuery, there are a lot of different applications. Of course, the operating system itself, we can see that it is Ubuntu 8.04. So obviously very, very old, but we know this, this is Metasploitable too. This machine is meant to be really, really vulnerable. And we can actually see all the CVEs as well related to our vulnerabilities. Now, of course, in the results, if you click on one of the vulnerabilities, it will also reference the CVE. Um, but there is a specific tab just for CVEs themselves to where you can click on them and it will actually bring you to that information and will actually reference the CVE website and bring you directly there. So if we actually right click this one, open in a new tab, you will see that it will give us tons of information. As you can see, this one was even updated recently. Well, not super recently, uh, but 2022. Um, so a lot of information on here that you can use to protect your systems and of course, exploit systems as well. So one of the other things that you can do nicely with this reports page, so if we go back into scans and then into reports here, you will see, or actually let's go into tasks first. Let's click on that one here. And you can also select report for Delta comparisons. Now, of course, we don't have two reports yet to be able to actually do that. Um, so we can't uh, really perform that right now. Now, if you wanted to print off a report, let's say you wanted to generate a report that you can share with the team, maybe you know, they don't have access to this Kali box and this open VAS box here. What we can actually do is either go to the reports or the tasks on the scan page, go to that report and then click on that specific report that you want to generate that PDF report for. And once you're at this overview, this report screen here, there is what looks to be like a little download option right beside the trigger alert. It is called download filtered report. We can actually go ahead and click on this. And then the report format, we can actually go ahead and we can uh, select PDF here. And then we're going to click on OK. Now, this will take a few seconds, maybe a minute to generate our report. And it is going to download a PDF report. Now, you're going to notice in this report, it has everything here. So we're going to have the result overview here. So we will see our host, which is our IP address, we have 17 high, uh, 38 medium, six low. Um, and then we have overrides are off. So it gives you a little bit of detail here. We have the host, uh, the host authentication, SMB success protocol, uh, SMB port 445. 
and we have results per host here. So here we can actually see all the different ports that came up and the threat level for each of those ports. And then here we can actually see some nice details on those vulnerabilities here. So we can actually see the high on port 1524. Um, it is the possible ingress uh, back backdoor. And then it can tell you what the impact is, the solution, the vulnerability de detection. And you will see that going along all the lines here. Um, so this will be a quite lengthy report, especially for the Metasploitable 2 machine. Um, but this will be extremely handy for you and your team to be able to decide what you guys want to tackle first and protect, or maybe what you guys want to attack first to be able to see if you can gain access as root or as administrator on that machine. And that is really it for the open vast system. So if we actually go back into tasks here, you can see that even in all this time, it is only at, at 8%. And if we go look at the report, you will see that results is still zero to 51. Uh, so we don't see a whole lot yet. It does actually take quite a bit of time. I think before I got anything, it was usually about 50 to 60% complete the scan before things really started to load in. One of the other things you're also going to want to make sure is that you have access to that machine or that network that you're scanning. Um, one of the things is if you have Snort running and you're going through Snort, Snort could potentially be blocking it. So you're going to want to make sure that your machine that is using OpenVAS and the machines that you are targeting, there is nothing that's going to be blocking that connection as well as firewalls, of course, could be blocking that. So if you don't see anything come up, um, you might need to check your snort settings, make sure that you can ping the machine or the network that you're trying to access. And also, I should have mentioned this at the beginning, but you're only going to want to really land, uh, launch these open vast scans on networks that you have permission to do these scans on. So of course, these are pretty intrusive and you only want to practice ethically, which is why we are doing this fully in our home lab. And we are only going to scan the specific machines that we actually want to. We could, of course, scan the whole network in our home lab, which would also scan that Windows machine that we have as well. But we are going to be doing that in a future video where we are scanning the entire network to show you guys how that works. And pretty much just have fun with the open vast scans, scan the metasploitable machine, maybe bring up a other Ubuntu machine, maybe bring up an Ubuntu 2204 or a uh, 2002, any kind of Linux machine. Maybe you have an old ISO for Ubuntu, bring that up and launch the scans against it. Maybe if you have a configuration of a virtual machine that you have in your production environment, maybe bring it up in your home lab and launch a scan against it just to practice to see what kind of comes up and see what vulnerabilities you might have just lying around in your environment. And that is really it for OpenVAS in a quick, simple video of how to perform a scan. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Also, be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. I will see you guys in the next video.